Oh my gosh. I like don't even know where to start. So much has been happening. Not even like physically happening. We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything. But mentally, it's like, I feel like we're completely different people. Like not actually, it's like so hard to talk about. I don't even know where to start. Like this passage changed everything. And like for me, I think it was changing everything in a really good way because I feel like so many dreams that I had are like now actually like seem like they're gonna happen so much sooner. I'm like shaking. <sighs> How do I even say this all? So when Dana and I set out to sail from New England to Bermuda, we didn't realize at the time, but in the middle of the ocean, we experienced what I believe is called a thin place. Thin places are places where the distance between heaven and earth collapses. Thin places are often sacred religious sites steeped in history, like the city of Cusco, Peru, where we filmed our very first ever video. But they can also be mundane places most people would walk right past. Ultimately, a thin place is just one person's experience of a place where the walls of the world feel a little weak, where time slows down, where other dimensions seem probable, not just possible. And for us, the middle of the ocean was a very thin place. Time takes on a different quality when you divide your life into four-hour shifts, keeping watch and then resting below in a rhythm both detached from and intensely connected to the rising and setting of the sun. The hours stretched out in front of us, with nothing but the sound of the wind and the waves. It's a surprisingly solitary experience, setting sail with a crew of two people. Most of the time, you're just standing watch alone in the cockpit. Then suddenly, the weather shifts and sailing becomes an intense team sport. And then that's over, and you go back to the solitude. The wind, the waves, a distant cargo ship keeps you company on the horizon. And then that's gone as well. Our friend Matt likes to joke that sailing is the only sport on earth where you can scare yourself to death going four miles an hour. It seems like I'm a very adventurous girl and like I am and I have really enjoyed like my adventurous side like during van life and exploring Europe and then building this boat and I mean sailing it here was the adventure of a lifetime but there's like always been this like huge part of me that I haven't really like talked about with you at all. Come on. All your friends are around you, Dana. Hi. Yeah. Myrtle, we got Alfie, we got Nishna. I felt like I kind of had to like not talk about and like not think about because it wasn't really on the table. And that's like having a farm and having a house. Honestly, like I got a glimpse of that when we were building our van. I don't know if any of you guys were like watching back then, but we lived in this like crazy little cottage on a mountain in Southern Spain with, that had donkeys and a beautiful German shepherd who I fell in love with. He was like, felt like my own dog, but he wasn't my dog. And like the pain that it was leaving that animal and that setup. Fan life better be good. We're <laughs> <laughs> not giving up. Yeah. And Lou and I have always talked about like how we want to have an off grid sustainable property one day, but that one day was like so far away. And that's where the concept of thin places comes back into play. Because when we were out in the ocean, I finally got the peak life experience I've been searching for all these years, ever since the mountain where we built our van Odie. 
and the message I got out in the ocean was crystal clear. Life is precious and beautiful. Chase the dreams you love the most and let the other ones go. I think what happened out there in the ocean is hard to put into words because it was a feeling that went beyond language, like maybe it's not meant to be said out loud at all. And part of the challenge in vocalizing that feeling is that it all depends on stakes. It's a little like when you've hiked up a large mountain, but the day is fading and the weather seems like it's about to turn, and you realize just how far the way down is. And because of all those thoughts in the back of your head, and because no one else is around, the view from the top feels a thousand times more beautiful almost like you went into Photoshop and cranked up the clarity and saturation. The horizon looks a little sharper. You can visualize the curvature of the earth. Things that mattered before don't matter at all now. Things feel lighter and it's all a little disorienting at first. I just don't know what's happening and I'm so excited. I honestly haven't been this excited in like, I can't even remember this time where I felt like giddy and like happy and well I mean obviously I've been happy but this is like different this is like all of our dreams are just happening so much faster than I ever expected and like to also just be like you know what F the plan just because this is what we said we wanted to do doesn't mean your dreams can't change and this feels so right and it's been on my heart for so long. What if we just honored that and just let go of any feeling of like sunk cost or any feeling that like we've already put all this effort into this so we have to do that. Like life is short and really precious. So if you feel like you got what you needed out of an experience, why would you need to do it so much longer than felt necessary? And that's just like what is feeling like so right for me right now. The feeling of running on solid ground after sailing all the way to Bermuda will forever be one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. You get a sense pretty quickly that this gorgeous island really is just a speck in the middle of a massive Atlantic Ocean. Over the days, we settled into a routine and started weighing our options. Our original plan had been to sail from Bermuda to the Azores, but by the time we finally arrived in Bermuda, the Atlantic was already full of tropical storms. And our seven day passage had taught us that Penelope is a slow boat and she doesn't like sailing into the wind. So our next best option was to wait in Bermuda, hope that no hurricanes hit the island, and then sail to the Caribbean in January. And for a couple days, that became the new plan. But something about it felt off. As I've gotten older, I've been trying to do a better job trusting my gut, but my go-to attitude towards most obstacles is to hold fast. It's a common way of thinking these days, to stick things out, to learn to love discomfort, to push yourself to the limit, and then redraw those limit lines over and over again. And to be honest, it's the perfect attitude for sailing across an ocean with a crew of two people and our level of experience. And without all of the challenges and mental work we've done in the past, we never would have made it. But the problem with this idea of never quitting is that it can be very difficult to know when enough is enough, when it's time to pivot, chase a new dream, or find a better alignment. Hold Fast is an old 
old sailor saying that dates back to Norwegian and Dutch deckhands and serves as a reminder to make sure all the lines on the ship are well tied, and to reserve one hand for the ship and one for yourself to stay aboard safely. After making it to Bermuda, and weeks after deciding to sell our boat, I got the letters tattooed on my fingers, not because I'm learning to hold fast, but rather because I'm starting to learn the much harder lesson of when to let go. Throughout this boat experience, we've had a lot of signs that maybe this wasn't the right fit for us long term. Make a U-turn. A week or two after buying the boat, the COVID pandemic brought normal life to a standstill, and it's hard to see things ever going back to the way they were before. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak an international public health emergency. There have been other signs as well. The week we tried to launch our boat for the first time, the engine wires caught fire. Over the months, as we got to know more sailors, it became clear that lots of people had lost loved ones on the water. And as if to prove the point, during our first year of sailing, we assisted in the rescue of three people from near-death experiences. You okay, Dana? Yeah, that wasn't me. What? That wasn't me. Somebody's yelling help. Are you okay? This pattern of risk continued into our passage to Bermuda, where, with some of the best professional weather routers in the business, we still had a tropical storm in front of us and one behind us. Fun day of sailing, right? It's a great day. It's nice to have the boat moving. Obviously, this is a little bit intense. On the one hand, I'm really proud of all the things we overcame in order to make it to Bermuda. Sailing is the kind of adventure that can shatter a marriage, but in our case, it made us a thousand times stronger. Hold fast, babe. And yet, I can't help thinking that this is enough. That everything I want, I already have. And that it's time to let that old dream go. I was kind of hoping I'd have this realization at the end of our circumnavigation, but to get it now might turn out to be the greatest blessing of them all. Dana calling. I am currently on a mooring on my sailboat with my husband in Convict Bay and we're American but and the boat is an American vessel but we actually would love to sell the boat. We found a boat yard. We found a boat yard, <laughs> a really nice guy and he's gonna even let us film and get to know the place so that's at St. George's Boat Yard. I'm really excited to be moving in the right direction. <laughs> oh, I feel way better. Right. He was so nice and he was like, we can hook you up and put it on all the local sites too. And he said he would help manage the whole process. They have a boat yard, long term storage there. So I feel like today could be a day that pushes us definitely in the right direction. He was like, what happened to you guys? Bad weather? I was like, oh man, I don't even know how to get into it because it's, it's like, a long story. it's a long story and it's so many things and it's not like, I'm not sad about it. That's not the weirdest all. thing. I'm just like, I feel like chapter closed. Like we did it and I want to do the next thing. Yeah, when Lou and I were out there, we were like, wow, this crossing is like making us feel all the things that we were hoping. And it, it almost feels like closure. Like we did this thing and it was profound and we don't really need to do it again. And then it was kind of like, okay, if we're not going to do another ocean crossing, then we were like, well, why don't we just stay in Bermuda and like really live it up on boat life? But you know, with the way that our brains work, it's very hard to be like, let's just hang out here for six months when it's like the idea of getting we started. We got steps to take. Yeah, steps we're to doing take. stuff, we got you know? To do. 40, feet, 40 feet over here. The last 20 feet start with some orange. And then so we gonna sell this boat, Dan? I oh, hope so. You guys can sell this boat. Oh yeah, we're gonna sell. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
They say the best day of owning a boat is the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Now you need to get Now I have a souvenir. It's honestly super exciting. I like don't feel sad about it at all. I really thought like we were never gonna sell this boat. I was like adamant about it, but people change and we changed out there in the ocean in a really, really good way. And it just feels like we have to take the next step and like honor everything that went down out there, right? I totally agree. And I'm just super excited to be selling this boat. Do you think I'm gonna buy it? We have big news for you guys. We just went to the boat broker and they think they can sell Penelope and we're gonna haul her on Monday and then we're gonna come home and see you guys and get ready for the next chapter. <laughs> You're so lucky. <laughs> Exactly. We thought that would make you really happy. No more ocean crossings. Correct. Yeah, you can cross the ocean in the airplane. Yeah, we're just really excited and like it feels like such a actually positive experience and they were so nice there and they think it's gonna sell and Okay Lou, it looks like we can get there at two thirty on Tuesday. So we are back from the boatyard. I am booking our flights to New York so that we can go see my family. And then we're gonna go up to New Hampshire to see Lou's family and just give everybody the biggest hug because that's really what we need right now. And I think that they're really excited. Nice thing, man. Come on in. So you built this cabinet and then here you can access your charge controllers, um, all of that, easy. Okay, so we just packed up so much food. Like the preparation we did for this boat was a little out of hand, but I found a church that we can give all of the food to, which makes me really happy because I feel like if I just couldn't handle all the food going to waste, but getting it all packed up, it's actually like really happy because it's like somebody who really needs some food is gonna have some top notch organic quality goods. <laughs> Last time driving Penelope. Crazy, right? Oh, yeah. So weird. But we got the perfect day for it. It's the calmest it's been since we arrived. I feel like the universe just keeps giving us signs. Yeah, I like it. This is the right thing to do. It really is. <laughs> Thanks for the help. <laughs> we did it. The boat is in a slip for the first time under our watch. That was actually kind of tricky, but we're feeling good. The guys were very helpful.
be home. <laughs> Are you going to wake up? I'm trying. I am so excited to be here. It literally feels so nice. We saw my little brother last night and surprised him for his birthday, which was the cutest thing ever. He couldn't believe it. And it's just like sweet relief to be back. I thought I wasn't going to come home for so long and now we're here and I just am so happy. And yeah, you can just see how happy my parents are that we're like done with that chapter and moving on to the next. Like they're beaming and it just makes me really happy that I'm going to get to see them a lot more and <sighs> just really, really excited. It feels so good to be back. I just, I don't know, sometimes when you make big decisions, you're like, did I do the right thing? And I'm just like, I did the right thing so much. Like, I've never actually been this happy. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I had the chills. <laughs>